the problem is, I'm, I entirely agree with your stock taking, but the problem is we are stumbling from one necessary short-term solution to the next necessary short-term solution. And their dimensions are intertwined, yes, and it's necessary also to understand the interconnecting lines. But you need a short-term solution for 1.3 million, probably 1.3 million refugees, highly uneducated, by the way, in Germany this year. You need a short-term solution of how to deal with Austria. You need a short-term solution of what happens if we have our German Charlie Hebdo, which is only a matter of time until that happens. We have been lucky so far. You'll need a short-term solution for energy prices that might be affected of it. Of it. You need a short-term solution for this and this and this and that. And at the same time, you have a construct of the European Union which is constantly somehow involved or somehow affected by here an election, there an election, there an election, there an election. So you are dealing with a, with, a, with a patient on the operating table where you have 28 very distinctly talented doctors standing around this operating table. Right. And once in a while, someone is stumbling over the plug of the hard lung machine. Right. And then the patient groans, and then they would put the plug back into the wall, and everyone would be happy the patient's still alive. Right. But again, another short-term solution. And this conflicts with what I've said before, that you don't see people right now in Europe on top of the institutions, on top in, on the national level, who would also be willing to not be reelected for a certain step forward. And this is, that's something which is also another breeding ground for growing nationalism yeah. in countries where you didn't dream of growing nationalism so far. Look at the latest Polish elections. Look at, right. those are things which are, not, yeah. which are not leading to a stronger Europe.